Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available Christmas 2024, the album. Dad, shimmy, shimmy, F. Rock on, gold dust, woman. Boost! How are you guys doing today? Well, we're still in Mexico. <laughs> it was my husband's birthday and my birthday is coming up on the 29th. And I was actually thinking about just taking the rest of the time off and not filming any videos except for my vlog. I am vlogging every single day over on my vlog channel, Peter Vlogs. People say it's like a podcast. People put it on the background while they're doing stuff. I just tell stories of my life, give little updates. Um, so yeah, every night I have been filming for uh, about a half an hour while I'm down here. Like, do a little shorter vlog while I'm on vacation. We call them the vacation vlogs. <laughs> if you've been watching the vacation vlogs for the last couple days, you know that my husband was sick like the last two days. Um, he wasn't really sure what was going on. He thought maybe it was the coldness in the room and uh, he wasn't really sure and his ears were hurting and his throat was hurting, but he woke up today and he is like 100% better. He is sitting right out there right now talking on the phone in our swim up pool and then when I get done with this video, we're gonna go down to the beach. So he's just kind of laying out and relaxing this morning and things like that. And actually, like I said, I wasn't going to uh, film a video today because I'm very tired. <laughs> I'm very tired because I got a good night's sleep, but it was, uh, I kept on waking up. I had the weirdest dreams last night. So because my husband wasn't feeling very good, we just ordered room service and we stayed in and we uh, watched TV last night. And so we were trying to figure out something to watch and both of us um, wanted to watch uh, the new season of the reboot of Pretty Little Liars. My husband watched the original, I think it was like the seven seasons of Pretty Little Liars. Um, I watched like one season and then like one episode of season two and then I stopped. I was like, this is cornball. I can't continue to watch this. Um, by the way, the other day in one of my videos, I said I keep on saying cornball because I said Bradley on season three of Survivor. It's actually Brandon. <laughs> and that's who, I was watching it back and I was like, there's no Bradley on season three of Survivor. It's Brandon. But anyway, um, I thought it was the, the first, you know, Pretty Little Liars that was based off the books was kind of corny. It was kind of cornball. But they did a reboot. I think it was a year or two ago. And it's called, the first season was called Original Sin. The second season is called Summer uh, Summer School. And so it, 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 it's kind of the same idea, except it's like the serial killer is trying to kill these girls. There are so many horror movie references. Um, I mean, it's when you're looking for it, it's constant. And I didn't even realize until last night when we were like pulling up the episodes that each episode of this season is actually named after a horror movie. And they do like, they pull stuff from Scream. They pull stuff from like Halloween. They refer to somebody as Lori Strode from Halloween. There are so many horror movie references and um, it's just fantastically written. So we watched it last night. It's very scary, actually. It's very scary. So um, I kept on waking up having the weirdest dreams last night. And um, like I said, I wasn't really gonna make a video today and Alex was like before we go to the beach do you want to you know film our Q&A so when we go on vacation we usually do a Q&A like a couple's Q&A and uh, I know people think that like my husband has to be like you know forced to do this like it's the last thing in the entire world that he wants to do but he's usually the one that asks if I, I want to do it or not and I'm like yeah I was like but I think I'm gonna film something else because while he was like out there I was drinking my coffee did I bring my coffee in? I'm a coffee city right over there. Um, I like brought my coffee out there and I was like just scrolling through stuff because, uh, so we, we probably will be doing the Q&A. I wasn't sure if we were gonna end up doing it on this vacation or not. And I will probably put something up if you guys wanna add to the Q&A. Um, I will probably put something up on Instagram. So follow me over on the Instagram and then I'll put something up in the stories about ask us a question. But he brought this deck of cards down here. It's like this questions you ask couples or whatever. And we were actually like playing it at the pool when before everybody left. So all of our friends left. It's just Alex and I. My brother and sister-in-law, they went and they got an Airbnb in Tulum and they're golfing today. So they're still down here. Um, but the, everybody else has gone back home. So, um... So we were at the pool and we were playing this game. It's like stupid little questions you ask couples and stuff like that, kind of to see how well they know each other. So Alex was like, we could do this for the Q&A. And I was like, okay. And then today he was like, or do you want to put questions up? I was like, let's just do a little bit like a mix of both because we always get this, we've done so many Q&As at this point that um, we like get the same questions over and over and over again. So I'll put something up on Instagram and then we'll kind of mix that with that if you guys want to see a uh, couple's Q&A. People seem to really enjoy it when we do them. So we didn't do when we went to Miami. So this time we will try to do one. Okay, 
So um, I was outside and he was like in the pool and whatever and I was just like drinking my coffee and I was slipping through and I was like, okay, let's see what's going on today. Nobody had really sent me any drama. So I, I did re see that right after I came out with my video about um, Jaclyn Hill where everybody apparently felt that it was a personal attack of mine against Jaclyn Hill and that I was trying to take Jaclyn Hill down because she had, you know, said some things about her business. I, I turned around and I saw that Jen Loves Reviews uh, came out with a video addressing some things about uh, Jaclyn Hill's former business, Jaclyn Cosmetics, that was never her own business. And I was like, oh, so apparently it's not a personal attack. Apparently it's not a personal attack on Peter Mon to take down Jaclyn Hill. If Jen Loves Reviews is reviewing, is, is talking about it too, as well as many other people. So anyway, um, I thought I would watch that video and I would respond to it. Jen Loves Reviews is somebody that she always digs very deep into this stuff. She's the one that originally went over the Jaclyn Hill uh, paperwork and the legal documents and things like that. And she's really who I learned everything about, about the legal documents of Jaclyn Hill and Jaclyn Cosmetics and Forma Brands and all that kind of stuff. So if you haven't watched her video yet, go watch it. I'm going to watch it and then I will probably respond to her findings in a, a video response. So anyway, so I'm excited about watching that video. So I was sitting there and I was rolling through Twitter and I was like, okay, let's see what Jeffree Star's up to today. <laughs> let's see what James Charles and Colleen Ballinger's up to today. Oh, by the way, I think I said this in my vlog last night, but um, a couple people DM'd me and then I think I got a couple comments in one of my videos too. People were like, have you seen Rachel Ballinger down there? I, first of all, I wouldn't know Rachel Ballinger if she breathed her bad breath in my face. Okay, I don't know Rachel Rachel Ballinger like that. I know she's good friends with JoJo Siwa, and I've seen her in like a few of the Colleen Ballinger, the early, early, early videos, because I, I went back and watched those. But I don't really know Rachel Ballinger like that. I don't know any of the Ballingers like that. Thank, thank God. And so I don't know her like that. I don't know her. <laughs> she don't, okay? Sometimes she do, but she don't. I don't know Rachel Ballinger like that. But people are like, oh my God, have you seen Rachel Ballinger? Are you like, is she, they acted like in the the comments that they left they made it sound like she was staying at the same resort that we're staying at like have you seen her she's down there well when i went to and they didn't say like at your resort they just said have you seen her she's down there so i went and i looked over on her instagram um she is like in our general area of mexico but there's 400 resorts in our general area she's not staying at her resort i have no idea what resort that's at um, and I know nothing about Rachel Ballinger even to wish her a good time. So, I mean, good time, I guess. I, mean, I don't know anything about her. So, anyway. Um, but no, she's not staying at the resort that we're at. And I haven't ran into, uh, Miss Rachel Ballinger. I don't know anything about her. But I was sitting outside and I was, like, rolling through Twitter. Now, I have to be honest with you. I have been thinking recently about getting rid of Twitter. Okay? I just, for me, it is... Every time I get on Twitter, for anybody that follows me on Twitter, what you know is that I literally, I just reshare every single day the Halloween countdown. I think it comes on, it depends, like, I think today they posted it like an hour ago and it's like 11 a.m. or something like that right now or 12. And so they posted it like an hour ago, but they usually post it like right after midnight. And so I'm watching my shows and I'll see it come up and I'll reshare it. Like, that's literally the only thing I ever post on Twitter anymore is just I reshare the Halloween countdown, right? And so the other day I was like, I think I'm kind of, because some, somebody responded and they said, okay, we don't need the countdown to Halloween anymore. Like they responded to that to me. And then somebody else DM'd me. Like, it was real funny. I mean, they were being sweet, right? And they're like, Peter, like, you, we don't need you to like count. Like, they, we've already got the Halloween countdown. We don't need you resharing it. And so then I was like, well, <laughs> if I can't do my duty as resharing the Halloween countdown. I used to do the Christmas and the Halloween countdown. Then I stopped counting down to Christmas. And now I'm just counting down to Halloween. And I'm like trying to live in the moment in 2024. So I really don't want to count down to anything. <laughs> this is so stupid the way I think, right? And so I'm like, you know what? Like if I don't, if I don't reshare the countdown to Halloween and I just don't post at all over there, I don't like, I don't think I'll ever just get rid of it. But like, I'm so tired of it. Like I just feel like Twitter is so tired toxic and every time I go over there even people that I know and I follow they're always talking about all this shit that I have no idea what it is right it's like oh my god did you see this and blah blah, blah. I'm like I have no idea who these people are that they're talking about like I don't know like have I aged out of all this stuff I'm so confused right and it's always like like Twitter to me is just it's like nasty mean and toxic I do not like Twitter I have I've said that for a very very long very 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 long time but I do find information you know through Twitter when I'm doing videos and stuff like that so I don't really like I would never just like 
I would never privatize my account, because what's the point? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, I mean, I'm sure in the Halloween countdown anyway. So I would never privatize my account. So I was like, well, I'm either just going to get rid of it or just stop posting on it. It's just like one or the other and just basically look at it as, use it as a tool to like, you know, find information if I need to. Because I need to have that, obviously, for making videos over here. But I'm just like so over the Twitter. And so today is like kind of a good reason of why I'm over the Twitter because I see stuff and then I kind of fall down the rabbit hole, but I'm very confused by what this is. And so I saw this post on there and it's about a TikTok and some, like this woman posted this thing. This has gone viral in the last 24 hours, you guys. I'm going to read it to you in just a second, but I'm going to leave out the names because I don't know really in all honesty how I feel about this. And I've shared that in past relationships, I have been um, cheated on and that like the betrayal that I felt and the lying that I like the betrayal and the the betrayal and the lying actually was worse than the action itself. I don't really know how to explain it unless you've gone through it. I've talked to other people that have been cheated on in the past and they like 100% agree with that statement. But I don't think it's a universal statement. I mean, I'm sure other people feel different ways, but for me, it wasn't so much the action of the cheating or um, you know, trying to go behind my back or whatever. It was the betrayal of it. It was the lying about it. It was the having to play Nancy Drew and try to figure things out and then realize in some situations that you were like the last one to know or like the last one to find out. It just, it makes you feel stupid, right? And so, um, so I don't really know how I feel about this, but I thought this was interesting that this is kind of like our mentality of the internet today that this went viral in 24 hours, okay? I mean, literally in 24 hours to the point where she took down the original TikTok. She's put up a second TikTok. So let me share with you what it is. So I saw on um, this Twitter account, here, let me pull up the Twitter account really quick. So I saw on this Twitter account, I know nothing about this person. I don't follow them. They don't follow me. Her name is Jen Rice. You can go follow her. And I just saw that she posted on here. Her post, you guys, has 5.2 million views on it. And she posted this uh, 6.25 p.m. yesterday. I mean, in 24 hours, this like just... She posted a screenshot of the original TikTok, and now in 24 hours, it has gone absolutely viral. Like, this is crazy to me. So what she's showing is, it is this, um, I'll just show you, I'll show you the, the TikTok, but I'm not going to read the names and stuff like that. So you can see it's like two people sitting on a plane together, okay? And this is a screenshot from the TikTok that this, her name is Carolyn, uh, R-E-N-E-D. I don't know anything about her, but she's the one with the original TikTok, okay? And it says, uh, if this man is your husband flying United Airlines uh, flight such and such from Houston to New York, he's probably going to be staying with this woman's name tonight. He and her met at the airport bar and haven't left each other's side since then. He convinced her to change her seat so she could sit next to him and they could drink. I don't know his name, but I know hers because he keeps saying it. He's also said, talks about her daughter, his daughter, um, and where he's from and that what he does for a living and that um, supposedly he's the president of this company, blah, 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 and why he's flying to New York. He's, she says, I wouldn't have known he was married if he hadn't been wearing his wedding ring. Excuse me, rubbing my eye. I didn't know what else to do to self-record. Do your thing, TikTok. Hashtag find the wife. Hashtag cheating husbands. Hashtag United Airlines. Hashtag the flight number. Hashtag the woman's name. Hashtag Houston. Okay? So I saw this, and at first I was like, I'll be honest with you, my immediate response was, oh my God, like, this woman, like, and, and we, like, we see this stuff all the time, right? Like, when people, like, are, you know, getting into fights on planes, and they're getting hauled off of planes, you always see this, right? But my initial thought about this was, oh my God, like, I hope that a million people don't see this before the wife does, or I hope this is kind of a hoax, because to be the wife on the receiving end of this, and have a bunch of people reach out to you, because I don't know about you, but like my husband, my cousin, I mean, everybody that I know loves a TikTok. I feel like, in fact, myself and my friend Tanya Jean, she looks at it sometimes, but very rarely because her husband is addicted to the TikTok too. I feel like with the exception of she and I, like everybody that I know is absolutely obsessed with the TikTok, right? So just imagine you see this. I mean, you can, the man is pretty clear who he is on here, okay? I mean, it's pretty easy to see. He's got tattoos that are identifiable. <laughs> And so it's like, um, and they're moving. Like when you like watch the TikTok, it's not just a screenshot, they're moving. And so I'm like, my initial thought was, I hope that, and I know this is kind of like a different thing. Like, I mean, we live in this world, I think today, where it's like, what can get the most attention that's gone viral? My first thought was, um, 
I hope that the, the wife finds out or he contacts her or something before she's like a million friends of hers are like, did you see this TikTok of your husband flirting with this woman? Because this is the thing. And there's actually this book that came out years and years and years ago, or not years ago, but probably 10 years ago. Um, I can't remember her name, but she's a famous psychiatrist and she's from Switzerland. Um, oh, her first name starts with an E and her last, it's like Elaine, um, whatever. But she talks about like cheating in today's era on the internet versus back like, like when my parents were like, you know, married, like, you know, or back when our grandparents, like the 50s and the 60s and things like that, right? Or some of our grandparents. And that like a wife would find out that her husband was cheating on her because like she would be like going through his coat, like to hang her, his coat up and she would find like a Kleenex, right? <clears throat> with like lipstick on it. Why can't I think of her name? Her name is Elaine something. If anybody knows the name, the book is fantastic because it talks about redefining relationships and things like that. So anyway, um, but she talks about how like in like the, the way that we find out about cheating or infidelity or the way that we like confront issues in marriages and relationships has changed over time. Because back in the day, what would happen was, let's say a man was cheating on his wife. Not that women don't cheat on their husbands because they do. But let's just say in this situation, a man was cheating on his wife, right? So she's hanging his coat up after he comes home. He's having dinner with the kids and everything like that. And she goes through and she finds a Kleenex in his like pocket, right? That has lipstick on it. That maybe he was like cleaning off his cheek after somebody kissed him or whatever, right? And so then she starts kind of like looking into it a little bit more. And it's that. It's like missing time. Like he shows up like 10 minutes late. He says he's at a meeting. He's not in a meeting, right? Today, in today's time, you could look on TikTok and you can see your husband making out with a woman on an airplane because somebody's recorded the whole thing. And imagine the pain that goes along with that, right? Like the pain of having to actually not just find out that your husband's having an affair, but actually seeing the video of watching it, right? And I know that there's probably a lot of people out there that are like, I would want to see that video. I don't know. Ask yourself really that question, you know? Like I, I you know, I never saw any videos when I was being cheated on, and I don't know that I would want to, you know? Knowing names, knowing who it was, knowing that some other people had known about it, that was painful enough for me. I don't know that I would want to see full-on videos of that person making out or doing even more and all that kind of stuff. And so it's like, how, how have we gone too far on TikTok, you know, instead of just like, I don't know. Like, to me, it's like th this, this whole situation has taken kind of like two sides, right? The first side is... Like, go TikTok, do your business, go find this woman, find his wife, go let her know, find out who she is. Like, that's 50% of the people that are watching this, right? Like, when you read the comments on the TikTok, well, the original TikTok she's taken down. She's done an update, right? So that's interesting to me, too. I don't know why she took the original TikTok down, but she's taken the TikTok down, the original TikTok down. So when you go to her TikTok, um, the, the original one I cannot find on here at all. Yeah, it's gone. The original one is gone. So she did an update, and the update says they. It just shows like an empty bathroom. Or it shows empty seats and them going to the bathroom. Update: They were making out and ended up in the bathroom, which basically means that they're part of the Mile High Club now, and that they were having sex in the bathroom and things like that. So imagine how hard this would be to watch this if you were the wife. And we already know that he's got a, you know a daughter because she mentions it in here. She she gives identifying information about the daughter. Not just identifying information that, like, if you were a friend, okay? I mean, this is, like, a big deal. Like, it would be, like, if the identifying information, and you guys can go read it and find it out on your own. I'm not going to be the person to, like, bring the identifying information to the, to the pain to the doorstep. Although this woman already knows because they have found his Facebook. They have found his wife's Facebook. They are tagging his wife's name all through this TikTok. I mean, how far does it go, right? Like, this is the insanity of it. You know, and as somebody that has a, had my entire personal life, like, you know, it, it, it's been so, it, it's, people have been so invasive with contacting my doctors, contacting my vets, contacting organizations that my friends donate their time to and are charitable, tried to contact my neighbors, tried to contact my cousin and her, her family and my in-laws. I mean, it has been so invasive over an opinion that I have of a social media figure that I cannot even imagine, okay? I cannot even imagine sitting at home, being a wife and a mother, and just all of a sudden my entire life being blown up because people are so intent on trying to find out who I am. Are, you, are we at that point really doing this woman a favor? Are we really helping her? Or has TikTok gone too far? Because the hashtag is TikTok do your thing, right? By meaning that like the internet won't let people down. We're going to find out who this man is. Well, you've not only just ruined his life, but you've also ruined her life as well, okay? 
So, I mean, we don't know the, the conditions of these people's relationship. We don't know that they don't have an open relationship. You know? We don't know that they're not separated. We don't know. But she's been brought into this now because they have put her name everywhere. And just the... Like, let me just explain this. Like, the in identifying information of the daughter is very, very important, right? Because she's a minor. So when they're saying this identifying information of this daughter on there who is a minor, okay? The identifying information is... I'm just going to try to, like, make up an example. Like, what if it was, like... um like, I mean, it's such specific identifying information that it's something to the effect of, like, he said his daughter played, uh, you know, Laura Ingalls Wilder on uh, Little House on the Prairie. I mean, there's only one person that did that. So there's, like, a, a, of who they say, I mean, there might only be five or six people that did that, right? Which is probably why she took down the original video, because enough people have responded to it. There are so many at this point... Um, stitches that are going on with this on TikTok. When I mean, you look at it, the first one that comes up is the way the internet worked together and found this man in less than 24 hours. Here's the first one that you see. Um, should scare a few of you. Hashtag cheater. Hashtag his name. Okay. This is a private citizen. This is a private citizen. You know, that, I mean, <sighs> It's, this is baffling to me that, I mean, there are rules about this. When we talk about doxing and things like that, I mean, this is like identifying info information. He's not a public figure, okay? He's some man that was cheating on his wife in an airplane. Yes, that's despicable. I don't stand by that at all, okay? But it, that's who he is. And now all of his personal information is out there. His job could be compromised because he's bringing shame to his company. Nobody knows anything about this, right? Okay. Which is so interesting to me on the heels of just covering the whole Sam and Nia, the Christian family vlogging channel, that were on the Ashley Madison documentary. And how many people are, like, singing his praises and, like, oh, God forgives and things like that. And this is, like, a perfect example of that. That, like, there were people underneath there, like, there was one comment underneath his own Instagram that said... So if you're a Christian, you get forgiven, but if you're not, you're screwed, right? Like, and so don't bring religion into this, which I think is kind of an interesting stance. So I guess that everybody that looks at TikTok is totally good with this man, his entire personal life. I mean, this is the thing, right? Like, what happens if he feels like, I've been exposed online as a cheater, I loved my wife, I loved my daughter, I shouldn't have done this, and, um, you know, on and on and on, and then something horrific happens. I mean, I don't know if everybody's okay with standing behind this. I take a little bit of a different issue. Um, I mean, here's the hashtag, Texas, hashtag you can run, hashtag but you can't hide. I'm going to read some of the comments underneath this. Um, somebody says the girl's name needs to stay, uh, needs to pay for this. Now we need to find her, this is actually a hashtag, find her, this girl's name. Same question I had, where is she? For, for sure, hashtag, find her, hashtag, she, okay, all this kind of stuff. The FBI could never, y'all are savages and I'm here for it, exactly, the wedding band was in plain sight. Um, I mean, it's, it goes on and on and on. Um, I'm sorry, her arm in his lap and they just met, blah, 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 on and on and on, right? So then the next one, the top one, if you go over here, is a little bit of a different stance. This woman says on here, and she shows the video, and she's stitching, doing a duet or whatever they're called with it. She says, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm on the uh, line about this. Like, and she says, LOL. I don't know why she says, LOL. I don't, I'm not lolling over this. Like, okay, maybe he shouldn't be doing what he's doing, but if I was his wife, I don't think I'd want the world to know. And I agree with that, or I wouldn't want to find out this way. Um, and then somebody said, update they were making out in the bathroom, and they post that one. And all the women out here knowing they've uh, other they've got other women watching their backs for cheating husbands. And it's like this dancing, like, flight attendant on here. Um, so, I don't know. Like, somebody on here said, we have lost the plot. I want to see. Um, I didn't listen to this one. But they, they post the, um, the thing. But I want to see what the, the comments are underneath here. Uh, she also upgraded version where they are actually making out on the plane. What if they have an open marriage and now a random just put up their uh, put up their business out there? All of this, thank you. Um, somebody said people who will do anything for a bit of likes. It's so gross. Thank you. People need to stay out of other people's business. I keep on liking all these. So when somebody comes and says Peter Mon liked one of these comments, she do <laughs> by accident. She do. I do it all the time. Alex and I were watching. Um, 
we were watching that Pretty Little Liars last night, and there's a scene when they're going through. So one of the girls, the girl that works in the, the the movie theater, she starts working with this other guy, and she's like going through his Instagram. This is Tanya Jean and I all the time, right? When I'm like showing her something, like some video I'm gonna cover or whatever, or tea online, and her friend like takes the phone and she's like, "Let me look," and she like likes like a picture, and she's like, "Oh my god!" Now I'm like, Tanya Jean, that's why you can't have my phone, Tanya Jean. So anyway, <laughs> has that ever happened to any of you? Okay. At this point, she should have just confronted him face to face. I agree with that. I agree with that. Why not just go up to the, the, the guy and be like, hey, listen, okay? I'm a woman out of protection for other women and your wife. What you're doing right here is bullshit. And to the woman sitting next to you, why are you okay flirting with a married man, you know? And how do people know that they're not role playing? Like somebody said that on here. Maybe they're role playing. How do they know that this isn't a husband and wife and they're role playing like that? I mean, just a little inside secret. I mean, people ask us all the time, because y'all, this should have been my Adam and Eve video for the month. <laughs> no true story, it should have been. Because it's a true story. You know, Alex, and people ask us all the time, how do you keep the passion alive in a relationship? How do you get the stuff alive all the time? Alex and I do a lot of that kind of joking kind of stuff. No, we don't play it through all the way, like on a plane. Listen, I got books to, to read and TV shows to watch. I ain't doing a four hour role play, okay? But if you think we've never sat next to each other on a plane and been like, hey, it's, you're really handsome. It's nice to meet you before. Or walk up to each other at a bar and stuff like that. We do it all the time. Play it through for five minutes, okay? Go watch When a Man Loves a Woman. They do it in that movie. They've done it in a million movies, okay? My husband and I, after almost 16 years, we still do that shit to each other. Maybe this was just a long role play they were doing. And now the whole people, all of these people are like exposed for it, you know? They spend so much time online that they think of other human beings as another piece of entertainment to consume. Somebody said, I couldn't imagine the terror of going through that while starting um, from over one million strangers knowing about it along with your name. Utter nightmare. Somebody said, I remember a girl posted a couple dancing at an event, claimed she heard them planning to hook up and the man was cheating. Come to find out that was his coworker and his wife was at the event. Oh. Remember when everyone was freaking out about too much surveillance in the street? The government really doesn't need to do that anymore. Amen. Because there are more people that are happy to do each other. And also expose the daughter for this. The six-year-old daughter is exposed everywhere. I mean, all these people that are co-signing it are okay with it. I mean, like, I don't know that I would want my name out here co-signing this. Somebody said, these videos are really made up to help. They need to be deleted once the woman finds out. People take it too far. Why are you posting this woman's personal business and the kids? How insensitive. Somebody said, I really find these odd. odd. Way too comfortable to find out on a viral video where thousands of people running to find you is terrifying. Because in the original video, all these people were like, we have to find the wife. We have to find the wife. We have to find the wife, right? And so when you go over here to, where am I at on time? This is going to stop in a minute and a half. Hold on. I'm not going to make this the world's longest video today. But when you go over to the original Twitter, um, what she posts is, this is why they're banning TikTok. Okay, that's why she, and she then she posts a screenshot of it. When you read the comments underneath here, it's so interested and she says underneath there they don't like accountability reporting and then she says okay i guess i will use this opportunity to promote my reporting on houston houston area cats and then she posts a picture of her cat i don't know what that means this isn't the girl this isn't her tiktok is it no it's not her tiktok original so she, somebody says so of course i had to run over to tiktok and get an update and well the internet did its thing he can never go home now the internet found his wife so fast somebody said Somebody said, imagine uh, a wife finding out like this. He'll be uh, lit. Um, goes on and on and on. Also, I need to report back on what happens next. Things are happening. His wife, oh, this is in the comments of the video on TikTok. His wife's name is, and not only do they list it, they tag her TikTok, okay? And they at her, the next person at her, um, that is him, bless her heart. Yep, it's definitely him, same smile. So they're tagging the wife in this. Weirdo behavior from all parties involved. Him, the girl, and the person recording. Bet his uh, bet money his wife found within three to six hours of posting this. I mean, this person full on posted a picture of him and said, I mean, ew. TikTok really be out here exposing cheaters and honestly, I ain't complaining. They definitely deserve to face to face consequences of their actions. Somebody said, I would hate to find out my husband is cheating via TikTok after thousands of people knew before me and had to track me down. The amount of public embarrassment this woman has caused for this family is wild. I don't think she really thought about the big picture before posting. And she did take down the original TikTok, but she posted an update. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm kind of undecided about it. My, I mean, when I saw it, I was like intrigued to keep on watching it. But at the same time, I was kind of like, this is too much. Like, this really makes me sad. I obviously, as somebody that's been cheated on, I don't condone it in any kind of way whatsoever.
whatever. But like I said, it's if you've gone through it, it's not really the action of what that person did that hurts. It's the betrayal. It's the lying. It's all the other stuff. It's the actual emotional effects. So then the question is, are all these people adding in to the emotional effects, the emotional distress that they're putting this woman through? Isn't that the greater picture? I don't know. Makes it. If it was so easy for all these people to find out who it was, wouldn't it be just as easy for this woman to find out who, who she was on TikTok herself and contact her? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow.